Welcome to The Art Habit, a series of art making workshops. My name is Leanne, and together we'll learn about artworks in our collection and using materials you can find around your home, inspire you to create something new. In today's workshop, we're gonna be taking inspiration from artist Richard Tuttle. More specifically, his loose leaf notebook drawings, box 11, group 13. So much like other artists, Richard Tuttle is a researcher. What did the artist choose to use instead of something traditional like canvas or a paper that has enough grit or tooth that holds the paint, something that's very fluid that won't hold up on a normal piece of paper like printer paper or notebook paper? When you look closely at these works, you'll see an almost sculptural quality with them. They move and they ebb and they flow and bend and that's the beauty in using something that is not typically used for paint is it becomes sculptural. And that's what we're gonna do today. So remember these workshops, they're for everyone. So grab your housemate, FaceTime with a friend, let's get creating. Today, we're gonna make our own paint. And don't worry, you can find all the ingredients around your home, inside or outside. Paint is typically made of three different substances, a plant-based, a mineral base, and an animal base. So as far as a plant base goes, things like fruits or berries, even vegetables. Think if you have an avocado skin or a pit, boil that down and it'll give you a beautiful pink color. Or keep it simple, and if you're a coffee drinker like me, brew yourself a cup of coffee and you have a cup of paint. Or if you're not a coffee drinker, Use tea. Things like berry teas or even uh, dried flowers like dried hibiscus will give you a beautiful rich color. Now with the mineral base, this is where you either go on a hike, go outside, find something in your backyard. You're gonna look for things like ochre, which is almost like a sandstone. And typically if you're a desert dweller like me, you can find that in your backyard. I'll give you a second to go and find your ingredients. And when you come back, Think about the surfaces that you want to hold your pigment. So think of things like newspaper, if you have graph paper, or even if you have an envelope and you don't have a card and you're not quite sure how to use it, you found a use. Now, you're also going to need something to spread the pigment. So if you do have brushes, go and use them. You can use any size. Or if you don't, you can use things like cotton balls something to hold the paint and spread it. You can even use your fingers. Okay, so welcome back. You've gathered your materials. You have your paints, or at least your materials. I've brewed myself a cup of coffee. I have some tea seeping. It's some dry hibiscus tea. Now I'm gonna choose my surface. Now for me, I think I'm actually gonna go with the graph paper. So let me grab a sheet of that and put everything else aside. Now, the reason I want to choose the graph paper, and remember when you choose your surfaces, to pick something that you relate to. And for me, with the graph paper, I used to doodle a lot in math class. I wasn't particularly great at it, but I loved the way the grid looked. And so I would color in certain sections and create a design, or I would make stripes that went along with the grid. So think about that now that you have your surface. How are you going to do your design? How is the paint going to move and ebb and flow around the surface? So think about that as you're doing it. So let me see, what do I want to start with? You know, I think I'm going to start with the dry hibiscus. So I'm actually going to grab a big brush. A lot of the times when you use paints like this, if you use inks or watercolors, you can use a soft brush um, and it picks up the color well. I'm going to go and make a line. So watch this color as it goes and notice how you start to fade in and out because the color stops picking up. And look how it's starting to ripple. I love that. And you'll get little bits of hibiscus or whatever material you're using. That's okay. All right. Embrace that. I love these kinds of lines. I love how it fills up a lot of the boxes. And I love watching the color go as you go. You can mix your water with your brush to clean it off. 
And I actually think I'm going to use some turmeric. I found this in my spice cabinet, so I think I'm going to use it. I think it'll make a good paint. And so I'm going to put a little bit on my palette. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to really saturate it with the water. And I'm going to knock it a couple of times and get some of the water to get onto the page. Oh, I splashed a little bit. Oh, that's okay. Remember to embrace those moments. Use it in your work. Now I'm just going to mix the turmeric with the water until it kind of becomes a bit more liquidy so I can spread it on the page. I like that. I think that's good. So for this one, I think I'm going to go up and down and make another grid. Look at that color. I actually love how it spreads on the graph paper. If you use something with a bit more of a tooth on the page, it actually soaks up all that water so you won't see this spread. But I love how it starts to branch out. It almost spindles like an amoeba. I'm going to do one more with the turmeric. And then I might use my cup of coffee. We'll see. Now watch how that color starts to fade in the sections, but it carries that sediment that's in the turmeric naturally, and it kind of relies on the page, and you don't get a full kind of stream of color like you do with the hibiscus. Remember, you're experimenting. So embrace that. Come at it like a scientist would, because essentially that is what an artist does. They do a ton of research into what they're doing, and they experiment with it. I didn't actually mean to go kind of in the beginning where it kind of wiggles a bit, but I like it. I'm going to carry it through. I think it's looking really good. Ooh, that puddled a lot. I like that. Now, if you really want to get a certain color dark, what you can do is you can mix with other browns. Or if you have instant coffee, I'd really recommend that. And then what you can end up doing is you can put it gradually in and water it down like I did with the turmeric. Now, I do have some of the mineral base here that we were talking about earlier. And this is actually some ochre that's kind of been ground down into a little bit of a powder. So I'm going to try that and see what I can get. I'd love to see what kind of paints y'all chose for your pigments. Can't wait to see the designs. So I don't know if anyone else made mud pies when you were growing up, but it kind of reminds me of this. We had a muddy patch in my backyard when I was growing up, when I was little. And my brother and I used to make mud pies all the time with little tufts of grass as garnish. This kind of reminds me of that. Hmm. Oh, I love that. Look how deep you can get that brown. Let's do another one here. Oh, it's a little bit of a wonky one. But that's OK. Now look, the color is going to start to bleed. And when it dries, what that will turn into is movement of a rippling effect in the paint. So I really liked how this turned out. I think I'm going to keep this here. And so remember, this was the turmeric, the hibiscus the stone, the ochre, 
and my cup of coffee, which I actually love. It ballooned out and bled into the page. And that's what happens when you use a surface that's not really meant to hold paint. It's going to spread out. But don't worry, that'll turn it almost into a sculpture. But I love how that looks. So now that we're done with the workshop, these are a couple of examples that we ended up making for this particular workshop. Now with this one, this one uses the hibiscus and the turmeric. Now the turmeric is starting to separate from the base a little bit with the water, but that's totally okay. I love the texture it adds. And with this one, we used a bit of everything here. We have dried coffee, the turmeric, the stone, and the dried hibiscus. And again, I actually love that the dried hibiscus leaves, the grounds, have made it into the work. It adds another layer. So that concludes today's Art Habit Workshop. We encourage you to cultivate these creative habits, but remember to tag us on social media at UNLV Museum using the Art Habit hashtag. Until next time.